But think of things like almost like an apple turnover or an apple strudel. It's got that pastry aroma about it. Hello, welcome back to the Grape Explorer. Today it's the A to Z of wine and I'm going to be covering Chardonnay, one of the most planted grapes worldwide and also one of the most popular too. We're going to be taking a look at some of the history about this grape, what you can expect from it in the vineyard, what you can expect in the winery, as well as some of those all important aromas. If you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm the Grape Explorer. I do wine education, product reviews, and lots of wine tastings, so if you're interested in wine, consider subscribing. Indeed, Chardonnay is one of the most popular grapes in the world. It's grown in so many places, which we will come on to shortly. So before we get on to that, let's take a little bit of a look at the history of Chardonnay. Well, the grape itself is thought to be the result of a crossing between Pinot Noir and Gouet Blanc grape varieties, although this often is challenged, and we don't really know the true history of this particular grape. We know that the Romans are thought to have brought Gouet Blanc from Croatia to France where it was widely cultivated and with the existing Pinot Noir that is widely considered that these two crossed to produce it. Chardonnay can be found in vineyards throughout France and globally and there are actually many clonal varieties of Chardonnay available, many of which have been developed to suit the terroir and the climate with which they're being grown. And finally, of course, it's an important component of many sparkling wines around the world. And of course, Chardonnay, famously used in Champagne. You know, if ever you're drinking a Blanc de Blanc, you're going to be drinking Chardonnay. So where is it grown globally? Well, most famously in France, it will be found in Burgundy and Champagne. I'm going to be covering Burgundy in a little bit more detail in a moment. It's the dominant white wine variety of California in the USA. And in Australia, it's found a home particularly in the Adelaide Hills, Yarra Valley and Margaret River. In Chile, you will find fantastic expressions of Chardonnay in the Casablanca Valley and the Lamari Valley. And in Argentina, it's also grown in premier sites in Mendoza. And that's just a handful of the countries where it's grown. You know, here in the UK for our sparkling wines, Chardonnay is the most planted white variety. But you can find it across Europe in a whole host of countries, as well as a number of other countries around the world as well. But it's Burgundy that I do want to focus on because that's where a lot of the premier Chardonnays of the world come from. And that's where I've picked out many of the key regions within Burgundy where you would expect to find it. So let's start off with Chablis, where Chardonnay is the only grape permitted. The best sites in Chablis are going to be located on the hillsides with really decent aspects. Chablis, of course, produces a very specific style, very mineral driven, very green fruit, citrus fruits. We then move down a little bit further south to the Côte de Beaune, the southern part of the Côte d'Or, with famous villages such as Merceau and Poligny Montrachet, where Chardonnays can really command top prices for fantastic expressions. And then that little bit further south again, going to the Mâconnais, the most southerly part of Burgundy, you'll find famous villages such as Pouli Fousset and saint Varan. So Burgundy, famous the world over for their wines. I'll come on to some of those prices a little bit later. So let's start off in the vineyard. What are some of the key considerations we need to take into account when growing Chardonnay? Well, the vine itself has a reputation for relative ease of cultivation and its ability to adapt to different conditions, which of course is the reason it's so popular the world over. It really reflects and takes on the impressions not only of the terroir for where it's grown, but also the winemaker producing the wines and using the Chardonnay grape. It's a particularly vigorous vine. It can grow extensive leaf cover, which can actually inhibit the energy and nutrient uptake of the grape clusters. And as a result of that, there needs to be an aggressive approach to pruning and really strict canopy management methods are going to be required. And the grape itself has a tendency to rapidly lose its acidity once ripened. So harvesting at the right time is absolutely crucial. And once those grapes have been harvested, we take them into the winery, where many consider Chardonnay to be a blank slate as it comes into the winery. And this is where the winemaker is able to make a number of different choices dependent upon the style of Chardonnay they wish to produce. It is vinified in many different styles, and again, that all talks to what the winemaker wants that finished product to be. Now, I've covered two key decisions here uh, that go into the production of Chardonnay. There are, of course, more than that. But two key decisions that a winemaker may choose are whether or not to use malolactic fermentation, and also to consider what type of oak influences are going to be used on the wine as well. 
If the winemaker does choose malolactic fermentation, we're going to be converting those harsher malic acids into softer lactic acids, which are going to create butteriness in the wine and some buttery, creamy type aromas. And also the use of oak, both either used during fermentation or for barrel aging, which are going to introduce that toastiness to the wine. And those are just two specific methods that I've called out. Another popular one would be something like Lees aging, where you leave the dead yeast cells in the wine and leave the wine on the lees for a set amount of time, that's going to introduce some bready, biscuity, doughy type aromas as well. And this is why Chardonnay is that blank slate and it gives the winemaker the choices they wish to make to create a really fantastic wine. So with all of the choices that are available, we've also got the geography of where the wine is grown as well and that can impart different aromas to the wine. So we're going to look at this from a cool, moderate and a hot perspective, as well as talking about some of those aromas you might expect associated with some of those specific processes we're looking at. Let's start off then by looking at some of those cool aromas we might expect, and I'm probably thinking about things like Chablis here. You can expect lemon, green apple, there's a real minerality there with those rocks I've tried to draw. And then moving on to a moderate climate, we can start to see things like melon, yellow apple and peach come through as well. When we get into those hotter climates, we can then expect things like pineapple, mango and star fruit. And where I was talking about some of those specific processes, for malolactic fermentation, we can expect things like butter and cream. And then with oak aging, we can expect things like vanilla, clove, cinnamon as well. And so it really does run through a whole host of aromas dependent upon what you've done with the grape, dependent on where it's grown. And again, that talks to the winemaker choices. So what have I got with me today? Well, I've got what I consider to be a classic expression from Chile. This is from the Wine Society. This is their exhibition range. It's from the Lamari Valley in Chile. It's the 2019 vintage. 14% alcohol by volume, so pretty heady. The exhibition range is all about providing classic examples of the world's best regions and styles. These particular vineyards are situated about 25 kilometers from the coast in the Lamari Valley and are producing some of Chile's most exciting Chardonnays. It's a particularly cool climate. We're talking about limestone that these vines are grown on, which will be reflected in some of the citrus and green fruits. But this particular wine has also spent a little bit of time on oak as well as time on the leaves, which means we're going to get some of those toasty aromas as well as some of those bready aromas as well. Now I've only opened this one up this morning and, and had a couple of sips of it, but so far what I can tell is it was those leasy aromas that were coming through for me. From a fruit characteristic, it is at the greener end of the scale. But think of things like almost like an apple turnover or an apple strudel. It's got that pastry aroma about it. And of course that is down to the winemaker's choice that they've used. And then on the taste, it's got a nice rich sensation where they've had some oak aging. That lees aging as well has added a little bit more body, a little bit more richness to the wine. But what it tastes like is fantastic acidity. And again, for me, it's citrus and green fruits that are striking through on this one. Despite the alcohol being 14%, I actually can't sense that that much. I wouldn't have classified this as a 14% alcohol. But it's got a lovely finish, wonderful acidity on it as well. So overall, this is a really fantastic wine, and that's what the Wine Society aims to do with their exhibition range. It's all about showing the very best expressions at what I think is a very affordable price. I think this one was about £15. So finally, I just want to talk about price when it comes to Chardonnay, because of course, when it comes to Burgundy, there are certain producers in Burgundy, there are going to be certain parcels of vines that create some of the very best Burgundies, and therefore command the very best prices. And that's no exception when you take a look at these two. We've got a 2016 Merceau and a 2000 Merceau. And you can see the prices there are around the two and a half thousand pound mark for just a single bottle. So it just goes to show that Chardonnay ranges in price, it ranges in styles, it ranges in aromas and in tastes. It's just a really versatile grape. And I hope you've enjoyed a look through Chardonnay with me today. Please be suggesting other grapes you'd like to see featured on the A to Z of wine. Let me know your thoughts on Chardonnay down in the comments section below. For now, I'm off to enjoy this one. I look forward to speaking to you all again soon. Cheers.